G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our little backyard farm. In today's clip I'm going to show you how we like to grow our ginger. So you'll probably um, be more familiar with it in this form here. Now ginger is an absolutely awesome plant to grow. It's a member of a much larger family and you also have plants like turmeric, galangal and cardamom in the same family. Now ginger really does love a nice warm tropical climate to grow in. It prefers growing seasons above 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit but with a few you know tips and tricks you may be able to grow some of this in a cooler region. I'll run through um, some of those tips and tricks as we go through the video. Now as for um, the best zones to grow it in typically warm temperate to tropical or if you're in the states i think that equates to around about 9 to 12. so ginger is grown from the root section it's the same section of the root that you would add to your stir fry once you mince it up a bit or add into soups or maybe even make some ginger beer from We've used store-bought rhizome and we've also used rhizome we've bought from plant suppliers. Now, there are some people who have told me that in um, different places around the world, they will spray the root with a sprouting inhibitor in the supermarket, basically to prolong its shelf life. It won't send up shoots and it will last longer for them. Now, if you are concerned that may be an issue in your area, it may pay for you to um, buy a piece from an organic grocer's and try and start off your um, crop with that. Now, when you are looking for ginger sections to buy, what you want is a piece like this, probably around about three to four inches or seven and a half to 10 centimeters in length. And it's a good idea to get a section with a couple of little buds on it already. Um, these little buds are what will send up the green shoots. The more green shoots at the get-go, the more energy um, the rhizome will have, and hopefully you will end up with a larger crop. I have seen people break off little sections from a larger piece like this and plant that out. I really don't think it's a good idea though because the more little sprouting points you have on the ginger, the better your crop is going to be. If you do end up buying a nice large section of ginger and there's a couple of different growth points all around it, what you can do is snap it in half and then plant two separate sections out. One thing I would do though is let it dry over a day or two, basically let the wound heal over. The reason for that being is I've planted some that I've freshly broken as I planted it previously and I have found that I've lost one or two. Whether a bit of an infection's got in the open cut, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I do think it's best to just let it heal over before you plant them out. One thing to look out for is stores that sell dehydrated wrinkly sections of ginger like this. Now, if it's mildly wrinkled, you can probably get away with just popping it in a bowl of water for six to 12 hours to let it rehydrate a bit. But something like this is definitely too far gone. You may be able to use it in cooking, but I definitely wouldn't use it to plan out my next crop of ginger. Now, as for planting these guys out, uh, the best time to plant them out if you're in a climate like ours, subtropical or a warm temperate, is towards the end of winter. Have them in the ground so once it starts to warm up in spring, they'll start to send up their shoots. Uh, just be careful if you do have frosts in your area, um, they can kill off the shoots once they appear. So it might be a good idea to either protect them or maybe wait until the last frost is finished before you do plant them out. In cooler regions or in warmer regions, if you want a bit of a jump start on the season, what you can do is plant them in little containers inside and then once the soil's warmed up and any chance of frost has passed, you can then plant them out. That way you can get to extend your growing season a little bit and yeah, hopefully you'll end up with a decent harvest towards the end. One thing I would um, point out is if you are going to grow them in containers in a cool climate, I would pop them into the container you want to grow them in. In a cool climate, I think you could probably get away with one rhizome, um, one little piece of ginger in a 30 centimetre or one foot wide pot. And if you want to grow a larger crop, you could probably use a 60 centimetre or two foot wide diameter pot and you could pop three to four rhizomes, again, only in a cooler climate, and that should give you a fair amount of um, rhizome to harvest towards the end of the year. 
Now, if you're in a warmer climate like us, I'd probably skip the 30 centimeter or one foot pot and go straight for the 60 centimeter one. And I would only plant two bits of rhizome in there at the most. I've got a root pouch out down the back and I went down and checked it out earlier and it is almost half full with rhizome growing around the edge of the pouch. I've also found two little flower spikes in there, which is very encouraging. So in a warmer climate, I'd probably only stick to two rhizomes in a 60 centimeter pot. Now, when it comes to planting ginger out into the soil, they really do like a nice, well-draining, compost-rich blend. Planting out the ginger rhizome is very straightforward. I dig a little trench about two inches or five centimeters deep and then place the ginger on its side so the little green buds are pointing upwards. Cover it back in with soil and Bob's your uncle. If your soil isn't too free draining, it might be a good idea to create little mounds in rows through the garden and plant your ginger in those little mounds and that'll just allow it to um, drain away any excess moisture. Basically, ginger likes a little bit of air around its roots, so if it's too moist, you will end up with a few issues trying to grow your ginger. As for spacing, I pretty much will stick to around about a 20 to 30 centimetre or an 8 to 12 inch spacing between my plants, and I find that gives them enough room to move. Um, sometimes they will grow into each other and can be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to um, get them apart, but you know, that's all part of the fun of harvesting, I suppose. Now, the best blend I've found to grow these guys in container is a three part very good quality potting mix to one part homegrown top notch compost or purchase compost if you can't make it yourself. With ours I like to put through a small handful of a slow release chicken based fertilizer as well as a small handful of kelp meal. That just helps to provide a few extra nutrients during the growing season as nutrients do tend to be washed out of containers when you water them. And I plant the rhizomes in at the same depth as I would the soil, two inches or five centimetres. Over the top of the soil beds, as well as the containers, I like to add mulch, and that just stops the um, surface from drying out, retaining the moisture in there for the ginger. Ginger can also be grown in aquaponics as well as hydroponics. We've had some very good harvest from our aquaponic ginger here. It is best grown in a flood and drain bed, that way you have the water coming up and then receding, allowing air to get around the roots of the ginger itself. Now, you plant it out the same as you do any other ginger, pretty much well just two inches or 50 mil um, below the surface of the clay or whatever media you're using. Now, as for hydroponics, I haven't grown it myself in hydroponics, but there'll be a link in the description to a YouTube clip showing you how the folks at a university in Hawaii grow it using a hydroponic system. Now as to where to locate your ginger plot in the yard, I like to put ours in filtered sunlight here in the subtropics, mainly because I have grown it in um, almost full sun previously and the plants didn't do too well. I have found plants like this one next to me do extremely well under the shade cloth here and also in a little sheltered position behind the lime tree. We've had good harvests from both locations. If you're in a cool climate here in the southern hemisphere, it's a good idea to set up your ginger plot or the containers you're growing them in in a position that faces north. The reason for that is the early spring sun and the late summer sun will be coming at you from the north so it just helps to keep the plot a little bit warmer that little bit longer. If you're in the northern hemisphere, you do the reverse. You situate your plot or the containers in a position that faces south for the same reason, because your um, sun will be coming in from the south. So that way you basically get to extend your growing season just a little bit extra. So don't be too concerned if you don't see the shoots from your ginger emerge for a couple of weeks. Even here in the subtropics, it's taken anywhere up to about six weeks for the first shoots to appear. Don't despair, you know, just be patient. They will come when they're ready. As for maintenance through the season, pretty much we'll just need to keep the plants moist and stop the soil from drying out. And also, I like to give mine a bit of a feed with compost halfway through the growing season, as I do with all my Zingabasi plants like the turmeric and the galangal. You can also give them a bit of a liquid feed if you want, as I mentioned before. Every month and a half to two months, I will do it here, mainly because my soil mix is fairly rich and I know they're pretty happy in there. But if you're just using standard potting mix, maybe every three to four weeks, you might want to give them a little bit of a top up. 
So when it comes to harvesting ginger, you can pretty much well harvest it as soon as you start to see little rhizomes appear as you dig around or fossick around the root of the plant. Now, I prefer to let it um, stay and become more mature and a lot more plump, but I do know some people that like to harvest that baby or young ginger. I just find the more mature rhizome has a more pungent flavour and aroma to it, and that's what I prefer. So it generally takes round about eight months to get a decent set of rhizomes in warm climates. Sometimes in the cooler regions, you might want to just let them die back in the pot or in the garden if you don't have a hard freeze. Just let them over winter and then let them sprout again the following spring and have a two-year growing, uh, two growing season. That'll just let the rhizomes bulk up a bit and you'll get a nice harvest. For us here though, we pretty much will harvest on a yearly basis. Eight to 10 months is our growing season, um, especially if we have a mild autumn and then we can take the rhizome out. What I have done in the past is leave a little bit of rhizome behind just so we get a head start on the next growing season. Now, when it comes to lifting the root itself, it's pretty straightforward. In the aquaponics, I just pretty much all moved the clay away, got my fingers underneath, lifted it out and gave a bit of a hose off. In the soil, I just get a garden fork, put it down beside the rhizome, lift it gently, and then just hose off any soil that comes out with the root itself. So it is a fairly basic root to harvest. When it comes to storing the ginger, I'm actually working on a clip on that at the moment and I'll post it in a couple of weeks time. But basically the methods I've used in the past is pureeing the root with a little bit of water and then freezing it. And then you can just bring out small little chunks whenever you want to add it to stir fries or teas or whatever through the year. Another method we've used is dehydrating it and creating little ginger chips, which we then just grind down when needed to add the ginger powder to recipes. But I will post a more in-depth look at that in the following weeks. So as you can see, growing ginger in a warm climate like ours is fairly easy to do. And I hope that the tips I've given through the clip have encouraged you folks in cooler areas to have a crack at growing some of your own. At the end of the clip, I'm going to include a couple of thumbnails, one to a playlist on growing ginger, turmeric and other bits and pieces, also runs through a few harvests, and another clip that shows you how we planted out four different types of ginger in the season just past. Just quickly also like to thank all the fantastic folks over on, in Patreon. You can check out their names in the description below and their YouTube channels as well. I do hope this clip has helped you folks out and you may have picked up a tip or two and I will catch you next clip. Cheers all, have a great one.